Welcome to Greenville, North Carolina. The final stretch of the college volleyball season begins this week. And we welcome you to a back-to-back -back contest. East Carolina and Charlotte. The Pirates won in three sets on Friday night. Now back in Williams Arena, gearing up for this final matchup on Senior Day for East Carolina. Welcome inside Minji's Coliseum with Brittany Hoyt. I'm Evan Budjervich. The Pirates dominated on Friday, hitting over 300. How does ECU continue that success tonight? Well, for again, it's senior weekend. I think for them, it's just going to be finishing, which has been a theme for them the last few weeks, really finishing those last few sets and last few points. Again, for them this afternoon, can they carry that over? If pin hitters last night were firing extremely well. Again, can they get that moving? The other side of the net, Charlotte, they had, did really well defensively, defending so the block and digging very well offensively. Can they finish these set points and get a big challenge today on senior day? Both teams are led by seniors. And for Charlotte, Jessica Ricks, 12 kills, a match high. How does she carry that success today? Well, she did really well mixing it up last night. As you can see, going over ECU's really tough block, she found the open spots, went down line, cross court really well. She swung so hard last night. A big thing for her is just going to be carrying that over. Then on the other side of the net, Fran McBride had an amazing performance for the senior. She did so well going cross court. A really big point for her was that ball control. She did a great job at a low error percentage last night. And again, brought so much power at that front line. Hit over 500 in the match did McBride. And the real difference was the serving. Five aces for ECU and really took advantage. Three pretty clean sweep sets to open this match. They really did. ECU came out pretty dominant from the start. Can they carry that over? That is going to be the challenge. Charlotte, they stayed in it, though. Not any set was just an outright beat down. Charlotte was hanging in tough. Jessica Ricks did a really good job. They can get Kreshner more involved today. Could be a totally different story. Two of the most efficient middles in this conference, North Cross and Kreshner. Could be a fun one as we open up the final week of the volleyball season. All culminating next Sunday with Selection Show. And Charlotte scores the first point on a double touch for ECU. Last night it was East Carolina's offense very efficient, hitting 303. Snapped a five-match losing streak. Charlotte comes in, losers of 11 of the last 12 as that service error gives it right back from Anako. Wetstrom. Monica, fifth year senior from Longmont, Colorado. Tia Shum with a nice serve and an ace to open up her night in the back row. And Adler Augustine has leaned on Tia in the last three matches. Yeah, he really has. It's been good to see her kind of evolve into this role. She can see a really dominant serve right there. You always want to, again, that serve pass game is so important in the game of volleyball. Wetterstrom with a back set. That was lovely to Annika Thompson, the senior right side. This is the balance of Charlotte's offense, fueled by the middles, but four hitters averaging over a point and a half per set. Do a great job of also feeding middles, even on that right side pin, kind of really spreading out their offense. Altaretti blasts one over the net. Stays on her end. Here's the back set McBride. And Pat goes out with some teammates to help her out on that one. Please don't touch. Please don't touch. Please don't touch. <laughs> First kill for McBride, who was excellent on Friday. 12 kills, hit 520 in that win. She is so much power, power, power. And, and even leading into the last few weeks, as you can see, Coach Weatherington there wanting a challenge. It's a big day for Karen, year nine at Charlotte, and her daughter is currently at Penn State Zoe. This is her senior day today, so the family's a little conflicted Ooh. between Greenville and Happy Valley. Absolutely. Shared a few tears with her earlier as a mom myself, just missing this moment for her daughter. But she has so much family there, and her daughter, she said, even as a little girl when she was coaching college volleyball, she said, Mom, we chose this life. And again, she said, volleyball may keep us apart, but love keeps us together. So a lot of family visiting with her today. And like in Ted Lasso, football is live. That's right. In this case, volleyball is live. That is right. So she said she'll be watching it on the bus as they head back home this afternoon. Instead, no challenge being issued. So Peyton Evanstad to serve for ECU. Serving was a big difference. Five aces on Friday for the Pirates. Played a lot more in system than Charlotte did. 
as Izzy Marinelli hits it wide. She had been a reinsertion in the lineup the last two weeks, had not played in the previous two. Yeah, right here you just see a little bit of a miss hit, always a little bit of an awkward kind of a bump set from the back row to a right-handed player with that right pin. Marinelli hit 400 in the win on Friday. Rises off hands and into the block. Good hands for Kreshmer, who leads this American Conference in roofs. She is so good, obviously, extremely long. The athleticism there. But guess what? Coach told us earlier that she is the leader, the vocal leader, and she said oftentimes she fills in what the coaches should be saying. So she is just a tremendous game. She also is tremendous in the saxophone and was a mathlete in high school. So fun. All state in a math competition. Gotta love it. Feeding Kretschmer in the middle, good pipe play, and two quick points. This is where Charlotte can score in the middle. Well, and this is what makes them also lethal, right? Because with a great pass in system, they can put it away. Traditionally, they do. They have a low side out percentage. However, with a good first ball and with some confidence feeding their middles, they can get it done. Kretschmer and Natalie Foster could be in the discussion for all conference middles this year. As Alderetti blasts one down line, good dig by Lauren Nixon. That one just sneaks over. Marinelli goes down line. A nice cross-court shot for the right side of ECU. Izzy Marinelli, good control for her after hitting two. One error, one into a block. A good adjustment right there. And ECU head coach Adel Augustine noted needed her physicality in that South Florida matchup. That's why she came back into the rotation. I think for her, too, and all of these that may not be on the floor at the moment. You have to stay ready. You never know when the next one's going to be needed and when you're going to be the best in the next lineup. Meanwhile, the 6-3 middle, Kreshmer beat that block pretty quickly. Charlotte playing a lot more in system today as Ellie Pate rotates in. She had a career night on Friday. Double-digit kills, and the dump down is an illegal touch. That's a double touch called on the setter, Wetterstrom. Let's take a look here. I'm not, huh. She isn't it's in the front push. row. She can play that above the net. Maybe it was just a push. You can't flick the wrist. You have right. to swing it forward. It was called by Wade Brents, our lead referee. Then just feed the middle on the slide. That's quick offense for Charlotte tonight. They're already executing their game plan so well. And Evan, this is what makes them so lethal. Last weekend, they took FAU to five sets on Sunday. FAU, they're the team that just lost to USF. They're in second place in this East Division, so they, they know how to compete at a high level. The East is crowded. Three teams within two games of the regular title. SMU has clinched the overall title in the tournament berth. There's no conference tournament here in the AAC. Nice snag in the back row from Jessica Ricks. This will force a bump set to Pate, who had 12 kills in the three-set win Friday. Pate in system. Nice save by Sermaki, the libero. And an illegal lift on Charlotte ends the point. Really great back and forth. Defense, you can see on full display on both ends. Ellie Pate with a big swing. But Charlotte just not able to put it away offensively. Miyu Suramaki with a nice dig out of Saga, Japan. First player ever from the country of Japan to be recruited by Charlotte. Moved over in her high school tenure. Both teams off to a slow start and hit percentage. Alderetti able to save it, but not enough. Point Charlotte and Kreshmer's busy in this first set. Well, you can see how she demanded that ball again. She couldn't get that first kill on a slide. She's like, give it to me again from that right pin. She's so confident with big swings. That's four kills for Kreshmer, who was limited to an under 200 hit percentage last night. Not as involved last night, and I know it's a huge emphasis of getting her involved early today. Pate off the hands. First kill for Ellie Pate, the Auburn, Alabama product. You know, it was interesting last night, we spoke with Coach Adler Augustine afterward, and he noted, he said, this was the lineup I thought was gonna be back in August and September, and things just kind of shifted. So 
it's interesting, even as a head coach, how the, the lineup that he even thought has evolved over time. And here we are now in November, and this is who he thought was going to be on the court. That service error gives it back to Charlotte. Hayden set her career high last night with 11 kills. She had only played in a handful of That's AAC right. matches. It was a really solid display for her. She was, her confidence was high. Big time swings, mixed it up as well. Now it's Alderetti who wastes no time going off hands. Angeles with her first kill of the night. Right now she ranks third in total kills in the conference. How important will be feeding Alderetti tonight? Well, I think for her, it's getting her going quick and often. As you can see, she has to mix it up. But she, she, everyone knows her game is power, power, power. So she has to be creative because everyone knows she's their number one player on the scouting report. There was a miss set there from Charlotte insisted. Wetterstrom couldn't hit her middle. To your point with Alderetti, it's not only the volume of swings, it's the double doubles, 23 of them in her tenure. She's so good defensively, six rotation player. Such a high key for volleyball. Nice back set, Wetterstrom, and that block stays in. So a point for Charlotte. Charlotte competing point for point right now. And offensively, this is where they're having a little bit of a nod as compared to last night. They're just hanging in tough, and not letting East Carolina get on a run. That was Annika Thompson who allows that ball to sneak in. McBride with the kill. Thompson, a neat story. She was the setter for two years. She was been in libero for a year, and now is a right side and a setter. Does basically <laughs> everything for Charlotte. Whatever you need, coach. Oh, big old gap right there. Bright exits after taking advantage of that hole in the block. A Charlotte team that is top five in the AAC in blocks, but a opponent hit percentage is rather high, just over 200. ECU, meanwhile, one of the hardest teams to score on, but that's a double touch on the back row player, Kenzie Beckham. East Carolina came out of the gates last night, hit over 300 in that first set. A much different story today. Three early hitting errors. Marinelli does not add to those totals. That's a kill for the Pirates for second. Marinelli, great approach. Middle block so late, as you see, Crescent on the other side, just not able to get there. Marinelli had the whole floor to herself. Here's Ricks, who shined for Charlotte yesterday. 12 kills. Now defends of the net. Pate goes off hands. And a nice kill for the freshman. That is the one aspect Adler Augustine's appreciated about Pate, is her ability to read a block. Well, and I think for her, too, he said she's earned it. Her practice, everything that she's showing, she deserves to be out here. So it's good to see that translation from practice into game time as well. That goes out. And a rare hitting error for Charlotte, only their fourth of the match. You can tell both teams are so precise with these cut shots today. Well, and, and it's like they're trying to find the holes in the gaps, so they're doing whatever they can or tooling it off a block. And Charlotte's being creative of trying to get those points. Tia Shum in for the bump set. And Pate rockets one into the block. That's Kreshmer. Three blocks, three kills for the all-conference middle. And that is why she is number one in the conference. I'm writing my ballot today. Oh, my goodness. Laura Kreshmer out of Berlin, Germany. Tremendous hands. Top 50 in the country in total blocks. Emma Monks of Pitt is the best blocker in the country. And her Panthers, by the way, three blocks per set for Pitt. Top 10 national team. Impressive. And here's Charlotte riding a 10-match losing streak, but riding Kreshmer in the middle. Pate tests that block, and Kreshmer's all over it, combining with Werstrom. You can see the energy that it brings to the rest of the team. The dominant effort and the team effort there in that big block. That is a solo block for the setter. And this time, Marinelli beats the block on the right side. Izzy's playing all six rotations today. 
she really is doing a really good job. Again, for her, it's get that it's that ball control. It's keeping it in, keeping her head strong, being confident out there. She deserves to be on the floor. New server and Alyssa Finister for East Carolina, redshirt freshman. Nice dig by Alderetti. Oh wow, that was out of system, but it works for the Pirates. Both players went up at the net wow. and actually benefited ECU. <laughs> and now we have an illegal back row attack called on Evanstad. You have to play that below the height of the net. And I'd love to see that again because I don't know where she touched it. That's what Adler Augustine's asking. So watch Evanstad here. She has to stay below the height of the net. It was like a Back to the Future moment yeah, it was. right there. <laughs> We're going to 1952. There we are. And now a challenge from Adler Augustine, his first. Which this is like a hanging chad because the winner of this point will go to the media timeout. So we're taking the timeout regardless. <laughs> it's just who's going to have the lead at the break. First time Adler Augustine in a suit this year. You know he's going out with a bang on senior day. That is a great point. You know what, we'll take the time out and come back with the answer after this. We call it dry. We call it dry. The unrelenting desire to become the person you were born to be. Ignited by a moment. The realization that a future you could only dream of is within reach. At East Carolina University, you won't just imagine a path. You'll forge one through hard work and the success that comes without surrender. The journey that leads to your future. And this is where it begins. As you can see right here, challenging the touch. You cannot challenge the verticality, That's really. Right. It's challenge only the touch of the ball at the That's net. That's right. And it was clearly off ECU there. So Charlotte gets the point. One of the unique challenges I've seen this Very year. Very unique. So that gives us a chance to talk about Karen Weatherington. Longest tenured head coach at Charlotte. Won her 100 match last year. Let's take one more glance because it's worth noting you cannot challenge that rule Correct. about the verticality at the net. And the point awarded to Charlotte. To be clear, because you're wondering, wait, that touched Charlotte last. It's the touch by Pate, Correct. the illegal touch at the net that is called. Correct. You have to allow the opposing player to play the ball at the height of the net. If you reach over and interfere, if you will. Across the plane. A lot of geometry conversation there. Whew. That's enough math. For Brain me. hurts. Miyu Suramaki in to serve with a lovely float. Now Suramaki all over in the back row. Both teams playing out of system. So all ready into the middle. Good luck getting it past Kreshmer, her fourth block. So much more involved today as compared to last night, Evan. She is on it. Solo block for Crushmer. Four blocks a set would be elite numbers as that ball sneaks past Saramaki. And a point for the Pirates. An ECU team that had a much needed victory, snapping a five match losing streak. And Adler Augustine had noted bearing the weight of responsibility, of being a favorite, of being 
a team that was number one in the East and how they bounce back these next three matches. Yeah, I think it was tough. There was a lot of five set losses, some really tough things that they know that they really lost the opportunity. I think for them, it was getting their confidence back and coming in and winning this weekend. Had lost three five setters in a month span. Kreshmer on the slide. This is the set of the night for Laura Kreshmer. Five kills, four blocks. Well, she just matched her kill count from last night. She loves that right side pin as a middle. Great footwork, huge swing. That slide has opened up a ton of offense for Charlotte tonight. ECU noted the presence of the middle blocking would have to be important. So far, it's been largely Charlotte controlling as that serve ends a three-point run. This will be an important rotation now for ECU with Kreshner out the next two rotations. And this was something that happened last night as she was on the sideline. It was when East Carolina was able to build points, get a run, really capitalize when she was off the floor. The block of McBride starts it for the Pirates. Only their first team block. And this is an ECU team that's been dominant at the net in the AAC. Charlotte has truly had their foot on the gas pedal the entire afternoon. See if East Carolina can wake up, can build on some points, and find some momentum. Wetterstrom and System. This time feeds the outside. Thompson and another block. A combo tandem there for Root and McBride on the tip. And you can see with Kreshmer off the court the disjointed offense here from Sharon. It's truly a, a, a 180. The, their leadership is off the floor. Let's see if East Carolina can continue and there's an error. A service error will certainly help. Second error for the Pirates today. Important stretch here for Charlotte. Monica Wetterstrom, who's now in the top five in Charlotte history and career assists, over 3,000. Easy pickup by the libero. Ricks. For the senior for ECU, and McBride touches it over. Askew's been everywhere in this rotation. This is our longest rally of set one. Big swing point. That goes into the net, and the Charlotte block holds firm. Another really great rally, a lot of good defense. East Carolina not able to capitalize. Hitting air for Angeles, not something you often see. Again, just hasn't had that outright dominant performance. Her hit percentage is down to 185 now on the season. Lots of swings. Maybe out of system. And, and Coach Adler obviously noted this week to us, their passing has been down. Just has not been as strong as it was earlier in the season. McBride terminates with ease. Good first set. Three kills for Fran McBride. Fran McBride brings so much energy. And honestly, even elevates the level of play with her team when she is in the front row. Back even at 19 apiece here in set one. Ricks, kept alive by Beckham. Both teams hitting below 050. It's been hard to score in this set. Askew quickly outside and terminated by the all-conference sophomore. That's her second kill. I think she heard us. She said, I'll put this one away. Going down line. Solo block. That's how you get it done. Timeout called by Charlotte. And Adler Augustine noted, when we get Alderetti one-on-one, -on -one, she's unstoppable to that. Oh, there is no stopping her. Again, so much power and strength from the sophomore. So we enter the final week of the regular season, and SMU has clinched the regular season title. They'll get the auto bid. Wichita State and Rice are in great position for at-larges, but now if you're in the East Division, 
USF needs one more win or some help from FAU and ECU. It is so interesting, right? East Carolina looking to win this afternoon, getting Coach Adler Augustine to 20 wins. And again, both a lot of these teams, a lot to play for. The NIVC is also on the line. Florida Atlantic so tough, splitting with USF uh, this past weekend. So again, a lot left to play for. South Florida still super strong as well. Those standings brought to you by Grady White Boats. The West has had an excellent year. The top four teams outside of South Florida. It'll be interesting. There's conversation of adding a conference tournament next year, and that'll get voted on here soon. If you change divisions, do you go total record? It, it adds a nice layer of complication to the standings next year. Well, it really does, and it, another level of what to play for. And, and, and when you get to the regular season at the end, and then there's something just so exciting about a conference tournament, a lot of just fun energy, just great for whatever location is, families can come. It's just a really great experience having that for the student athletes. Charlotte will enter in a couple of subs here late in the set, including the happiest player on the court, Miyu Suramaki, <laughs> the Juco transfer from Southern Idaho, who moved to the United States to play junior college volleyball. Really neat story. Coach Karen Weatherington said that this is such a fun group. They just had a big Halloween type party. She said the coaches all dressed up as each other. She said it was super fun and just the Although their last 10 to 12 games have not gone to how they have planned the season as well, they, this group, she said they have a culture corner every day. She said they are a fun, fun group. And playing for these last two matches, trying to play spoiler on ECU senior night. Here's Ricks, who had an effective Friday, double figure kills. Unable to hold off the middle, that's Alyssa Finister with her first point of the match. A redshirt freshman who entered the conference about two and a half points per set, not as utilized till this last week. Has not been on the floor hardly at all this season. Got going last weekend. And carried that over, had great success last night. She had seven kills and three blocks. That's back-to-back -back matches with seven kills for the freshman. A really, really good performance. And, and, and just great, too, for ECU having another middle. Nice dump. Wow. Better save, Shum. Wetterstrom back to it. And in system, the kill. The middle's heating up. Tanaya Pruitt, the freshman at a Fayetteville. Charlotte's energy right now is electric. You can see the entire team bench involved. The middles getting it done for the 49ers. A service here. That's a costly one. Charlotte's middles have combined for eight of the nine kills for the 49ers. They are executing the game plan to a T. ECU with balance, McBride three, Marinelli three, Alderetti two. Huge swing point for the Pirates. Nice save, Alderetti with the middle back in. Kreshmer sets up in the middle. Uyar scoops it out. Pate is dug out. That's Waylon and Libero. And a nice kill off hands. Cameron Upshaw to Flower Mound, Texas. By the way, Flower Mound, Texas is a 15-acre flower mound in the middle of the city. <laughs> and a good kill here for Upshaw. The offense for Charlotte. It is alive today. 22 a pop in set one. The slide is roofed. Five team blocks for the 49ers. And a timeout, ECU. Well, the story of this first set is the play of the middles from Charlotte. They have been absolute dominant this afternoon. They're blocks offensively and defensively. It's a Charlotte team that had nice wins in the non-con. Coastal Carolina beat Xavier. But here in conference play, it's been tough sledding. Now, the 1 and 12 is misleading. There's four losses in the fifth set. And yet, Charlotte has found a way to win at UAB, and that's what they'll need to try to replicate today. Absolutely. They they have been trending well. Again, that five-setter loss even last Sunday versus FAU. That's tough. FAU came in here. That was a really, really tough team. But, again, they battled a lot of adversity. They 
It, they were lost. Danielle Jeffries tore her ACL and MCL in September. Jessica Ricks was out earlier in this season as well. So the big message for them this year for Charlotte has been just finding joy in the journey and the process. And again, Coach has done a great job of keeping this team hungry. And as you can see right now, two points to 25. To your point, Charlotte is out of the conference conversation, 3-14. and 14. And yet, this first set has looked like a rejuvenized Charlotte club. Well, they're playing still at a high level, and they're competing at a high level. They're not allowing their record to display or even get them down. But again, I, I, I think they're, they have a lot to fight for. Karen Weatherington has done an amazing job as a head coach, just leading them, guiding them, and really great leadership on the floor. This was a team picked dead last in the East. No players on the all-conference team. Here's Kreshmer, who could be earning her vote today. Wow, confusion with Whalen. Now ECU in system. That goes behind Pate, and a lift, an illegal lift on Askew is set point. These are costly mistakes for East Carolina. And an ace. Oh, this is going to be a hero ball here for Shum. That goes out. An ace. Secure set one for the 49ers. Totally flipping the script from Friday night. Totally different from Friday night. But you got to give it to Charlotte. Holding strong, finishing. 25-22 against East Carolina. This is American Athletic Volleyball on ESPN+. Plus. Welcome back to Greenville, North Carolina. Charlotte pulls off a set one win. This is the Charlotte team. It's 3-14 and 14 in the conference, but playing much better in this first set. They did so much better. Offensively, that was the biggest difference. Their middles are involved. Kreshmer already has five kills. She matched her high from last night. Getting more people involved. And honestly, they just won those tight balls. They really did. And East Carolina with some errors and some blocking errors and some service errors and just not in their favor. Look at the numbers through set one. This was yesterday. ECU hit 305. And today, a, a lot different story because ECU's at 023. The Charlotte's not hitting much better, right. but the five blocks of the net have been huge. It really has. That's been the difference. And it's slowing ECU down. It messes with you when the other side of the net is getting blocks and tips and touches. But that is Charlotte. That is what they do. They slow down balls. But guess what? Today, offensively, they're firing on all cylinders, and they have been able to produce. And they 
finished with a big scoring run at the end, secured first set victory. The Charlotte team that has gone on the road and beat UAB last week. And Adler Augustine said, enough of this fancy jacket. We're done. It's getting too hot in here. It's set two. Okay, you were a coach in the women's basketball level. When the suit comes off, what does that <laughs> what does that say? What does that say? It means you've got to you you need some space to breathe. You need some. <laughs> we got the tie coming loose. We got the buttons coming off. It like it, it, it's 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 go time now. Like he's got to be able, be ready to yell, be ready to scream, do anything necessary to win. As though my head coach used to always say, unfortunately, I've never scored any points. <laughs> and you couldn't tell by the faces of his players, at least early on. You do wonder late in the season, neither team is playing for, quote unquote, a championship. That's right. And how the mental aspect of that plays out. Yeah, I think his big message for his team has been, you know, win the day. And obviously going into last night, winning Friday, winning Saturday. You have to. You have to have that, you know, what's important now mindset. And with that, we begin set two. She want to ask you to serve for the Pirates. And Ricks goes into the block, a first roof for Fran McBride. That matches ECU's block total from set one. Huge blocking presence. East Carolina has got to pick it up if they want to change the trajectory of this afternoon, but a great start. Questioning if they're in the net. An early challenge here for Charlotte. That would have been on the previous swing before That's the right. kill. Let's see. Oh, I think it's the ball, the ball that gets the net. no doubt. Adler Augustine noted with us this week, Frank Craig, his assistant, has done a really good job coaching the block. The block has been something that has been super strong this year, getting the middles more involved. Obviously, Fran McBride and Carly and Northcross, individually and as a group. I mean, the block for East Carolina has improved so much this year. In fact, the Pirates are second in blocking, and, make, and North Cross is number three herself. Right. So that's been a, an added dimension. I think this call will stand. Here's the final decision from Susan Fleener. And there you go. Each team has two challenges. You win, you keep. And if the match goes five, each team gets an added challenge. which means both teams are down to one pretty early in this match. As that serve goes out. Volleyball is a poetic sport at times. Whew, I know. Both teams with three service errors early. Trying to keep track with South Florida, the best serving team in the AAC by numbers. Upshaw goes down line, tests her number counterpart, number nine. And that block goes out, a point for Ellie Pate, who's had a nice weekend here in two matches. She has. She surpassed her career high last night. Her previous double-digit kill number was first Campbell back in August. Has displayed everything necessary needed in practice, and Adler Augustine is bringing her out on Game time this weekend, earning a starting spot. Good serve from Kenzie Beckham. This have to be freed over. So the Pirates are in system. And McBride takes advantage. Hot start, four kills for the right side hitter. Nice definitive kill for the Pirates. Going down line. Green McBride, she can see the entire floor when she's leaping that high. ECU has the explosive advantage in terms of leaping, for sure. Okay. Now, Charlotte has the middle advantage That's with right. Kreshmer's in rotation. No doubt. Right now, Kreshmer's on the, the bench, out of rotation. A nice swing. Cross court, an impressive kill for Charlotte. 
That was Annika Thompson. And Upshaw mixing in there as well. Really great cross court roll shot. Just right around the block. Defense couldn't see it. Great save by Wetterstrom. Now McBride on the high set. Wow, she can touch the building here. Big Woo! kill for McBride. McBride on senior day. Cross court 10 foot line. And can out jump. Why not? Everyone in the gym. Whew. Must be a nice luxury. <laughs> wow, that ball sinks in for an ace. Tia Shum with her first ace. And that's just bad communication on Charlotte. Ball literally dropped. Two players looking at one another. Not something you want to see. This time a tough return for Thompson. Takes a blast. McBride is heating up in set two. Three kills in a roof for Fran McBride. What has changed here in the set three season? Well, they've had really good ball control. Their passing has been really good, so they're able to go to their pin hitters. It's not out of system. They're able to set McBride cleanly, and she can put it away. Freshmer hits it long. That's the net presence of the Pirates. Finister and McBride there which has affected Charlotte's greatest weapon in the middle. Oh, she truly is their biggest weapon for her. If she can keep it in, she is so dominant there in the middle. But again, comes down to that control and keeping it in. Kreshmer in the first set hit 350. This time is touched by Finister. Upshaw goes opposite hand and a bit wide on that shot. So we've seen Charlotte with two hit early hitting errors in set two. Which will bring the local boys and girls club to their feet. Sit right behind the ECU bench. All the posters. Swag does a lot in this world. He does. Charlotte hitting negative 120 after an impressive set one. McBride's been a big reason why, and Shum saves the roof. This is freed over. Back to Kreshmer. Insistent dig by Beckham. Ready with the cut shot. Now Ricks, 1v1, hits it long. Good defensive rally from the Pirates. Kenzie Beckham getting her cardio this afternoon. Forcing a Charlotte timeout. We'll take the break with ECU off to a hot start in set two. The Pirates want to even this match at one apiece. Good defense like this will help. Every great city has a great university. UNC Charlotte is Charlotte's great university. With nationally ranked academics, game-changing research, and trailblazing students with the grit to change the world. We are Charlotte's great university. Come see what's great only at Charlotte. Midway through the second set, ECU off to a nice start in set two after a huge win for Charlotte in the first set. That ball nearly touched the roof here in Menjis. And another nice dig from the libero Whalen for Charlotte. Askew in system, feeding the medals, and Finister finds the floor. You can see Coach Adler Augustine Looking at a list of finisters saying great placement 
finding those corners as a middle. When you can work those corners, you're just going to put a big challenge on the defense. An ace continues this run, and we've seen a resurgence here. 12 2 start. Talk about coming out and getting that first punch. East Carolina may have woken up here in the second set. I spoke too soon. 11-2 <laughs> start. <laughs> Kreshmer into the roof. Make it 12-2 on McBride's third block. This is the dominant East Carolina that we have seen this season. McBride just putting it down. Riggs into the block. It is a block party here in Greenville. What has changed oh in the second set? Oh my goodness, I don't know. I just think the timing, I, I think East Carolina finally realized, like, what were we doing? They let that first one away. And they're just dominating right now. Nice dig by Alderetti. And we have an inadvertent whistle, an accidental whistle, so the point will redo. Those faulty whistles always get me. <laughs> well, you see Angeles like, what did I do? <laughs> All good. Susan Flaner apologizes, and we get back to play. This is a 10-0 run for East Carolina, led by its block at the net. McBride, red hot. That's through the block. And McBride has seven kills, three blocks at the front row. Unbelievable. Leading to a Charlotte timeout. I mean, what else can you do? <laughs> Sitting in this final week of the American, and these news and notes are brought to you by Grady White Boats. SMU, impressive regular season, just the one loss. Their third AAC title. That's a great program heading to the NCAAs. Rice and Wichita State, now that's a battle to decide at large berth who gets in, who doesn't. Meanwhile, USF has taken advantage, pulling off the sweep, and they have essentially clinched the East Division. Well, it's so much that has been going back and forth between USF, FAU, East Carolina was in it until about a week or two weeks ago. The, the, what I love about this conference is the competitiveness, the, the RPI of, of what the level of play has just increased, improved with the new addition of, of new conference members. And it's, it's just amazing to see how this conference has improved so much this year. Rice and North Texas also had great years. So you got five teams that could go to the postseason, whether it's NCAA, NIVC, you name it. And then Kaylee Cassidy is about to lock in player of the year in a couple of no weeks. No doubt. She's the five-time player of the week for Tulsa. Tremendous player with, she single-handedly beat teams. And Tulsa is 9-9. Nine and nine. They are not <laughs> right, elite, no. but Cassidy leads the country in total points and has been excellent, especially in a conference. So has been Kreshmer in the middle. If I had to say of these two clubs, I think Kreshmer makes the honorable mention, and I think Alderetti makes the second team Absolutely. all conference. We'll see who else joins the party. As that ends a 12-0 ECU run. Nice dump point for the 49ers. Maria Clara Andrade could also be the player of the year for South Florida. Yes. 5.9 points a set last week. And that was big wins over FAU, like we noted. And a kill in the middle for Finister. Yeah, FAU has some tremendous players. I think what's great too, you know, you, you got SMU who can make a tournament run and see what they can do on behalf of the conference. Their final year in the yes. AAC. They know what they need to do and see what kind of run they can make in the tournament. Selection Sunday is next Sunday night. That's on ESPN for the first time ever, main ESPN. The final four, which will be epic, is on ABC for the national championship in early December. Can Nebraska repeat? Oh. Can Minnesota give them a run, top 10 team? And how about a healthy Stanford this year? That's it right. is fascinating in the top 10. Finister a little out of system. 
That does stay in play. Nice teak by Kreshmer and a good hands. Alderetti is tipped. Beckham saves it. Freed over. Options. That goes out. And a hitting error for Kreshmer ends the point. Phenomenal defense on both sides. Got to give it to Kenzie Beckham laying out. Keeping it alive for the Pirates. ECU's defense much better here at set two. So much better. They're, they're getting balls up, running them down, laying out, doing what is needed. That is shot long by Thompson. Six hitting errors yeah. for Charlotte. And you combine that with multiple blocks by ECU. They've struggled scoring, obviously only four points currently. Just getting it through East Carolina's block. What a response after Charlotte came out swinging in set one. That one is a joust one by Wetterstrom. Point Charlotte. Charlotte Club and wants a fourth win. They'll be back at home before Thanksgiving to close out the season. Good insistent swing. Finister with three kills now in the second set. What I love is how ready she has been. Not as much playing time throughout conference play, but last weekend called upon versus USF and that five set loss there. And again, repeating last night and then today, so confident. ECU has played in system this whole set. Holly Huff checks in, nearly gets a kill. Good dig by Ricks. Evanstad in system. Brittany Wood, the senior, checks in for her first action on senior day. Probably at North Cross returns in the middle for the Pirates. And Alderetti takes blast from the back row. That's her third kill. She has to work so hard to get kills. But her back row attack is dominant. And the balance of the Pirates today has been impressive. Six different players with a kill. Charlotte, a bit out of system here. Negative 150 in this set. That'll continue with a roof. Ollie Huff with the solo block. Great team effort over there. Give it to Ollie Huff. Great hands. An ace for Finister. And this is about as dominant as a set as you're going to see. No doubt. I think that first set, East Carolina just let it slip through their hands. Not as clean at all. And here they are. The fewest points the Pirates have given up in a set is nine. And we'll see a couple of substitutes now for ECU. Soraya Schulte, one of the four seniors, comes in. Deep back row attack to Schulte, getting some senior day moments. Brittany Wood. Nice save from the back row, Sermaki. And a point for Charlotte, two in the block. Annika Thompson, the senior out of Collierville, Tennessee. And what's going through the mind of Schultes right now? She looks shocked to dig Goodness. that ball out. As she's trying to warm her hands. Played in two <laughs> matches as a sophomore. One match last year gets her first appearance today. Return serve. Now gets repositioned by her teammates. The dump is scooped out. And Huff extends this lead 22 to 6. Although all eyes are on number 16 in the purple. No doubt. Really great passing. Ollie Huff right there putting it away. So great having different faces on the floor. Senior weekend here for East Carolina. This is the 39th match of Soraya's career. And it'll be her final one in this building. Fourth year junior. 
Is this the final COVID year? That's a great question. <laughs> I don't know. That swing goes into the net. A hitting error for Charlotte from Tania Pruitt. Electing not to return for her fifth year. Let's put it that there way. There we go. Fran McBride is electing to return That's right. for a COVID year. It's kind of like a free voucher at the movie theater. You know, you have it, it always sits in the closet, and sometimes you pull it out. Nice punch by Askew. The good news for you, Brittany, is I'm that... out of eligibility. Askew, yeah. You're retired, I'm retired. And a kill by Charlotte to extend the set, Thompson. The big question is now, how does Charlotte bounce back in set three after this media break? I think for them, they have to come out clean from the start. Really be creative offensively. What a roof by Ricks. Great hands. Plays like that will certainly help. No doubt. And I think for Charlotte, they just have to start strong in that next set. Schulte's return serve. McBride is dug out, and we have a net violation on Cameron Upshaw. So set point here for ECU, which would be, if they win this point, their largest margin of victory in the set. Big time approach. Oh, on the way down, too. On the way down. Kenzie Beckham in to serve on set point. An ace terminates the set, and the most successful set for ECU all season. 25-8 closes it out. Dominant from the start. East Carolina carried it the entire way. We are knotted up one to one. Come back for the third set of AAC Volleyball. Welcome back to Greenville, North Carolina. All even, one set apiece. Charlotte impressive in set one, and ECU dominant in set two. That's the largest margin of victory for the Pirates in, in any set this year. Here we sit, the final week of the regular season presented by Grady White Boats. Everyone just getting started today, but the big match is Wichita State Rice for second place in the West Division. Oh, that's gonna be an impressive matchup. SMU North Texas, a quality matchup as well. All four of those teams are in NCAA tournament conversation. With that, we welcome inside Minji's Coliseum with Brittany Hoyt. I'm Evan Budjervich. 
Charlotte gritty in set one, but the Pirates hit 308 and tremendous at the net. Really flipped this match in set two. They really did. They showed up in set two in every category, offensively, defensively. Their block was absolutely dominant, really shutting Charlotte down completely offensively. Obviously stuck at four points for a long time. So a tremendous display, but hey, knotted up one to one. Let's see what can happen third set. Which shows you how important Charlotte's middle, Laura Kreshmer, will be. Dominant in set one, a little quiet in set two. Yeah, absolutely. Just couldn't really get going in set two. Got blocked a few times. You can just see, again, her hands, her length defensively. She is so good. And honestly, that's where they got their energy in that first set from her, how dominant she was. Let's see if they can carry that over to the third set and get that going again. Kreshmer had five blocks in the match. That was really the key for Charlotte at the net. And then ECU woke up a little bit in set two, and Fran McBride and crew started swinging. Yeah, they really did. Their offense was firing on all cylinders. Fran McBride so well from that right pin. Again, just a lot of really good control for her. Defensively, the block is truly what changed the name of the game for them, too. Again, just so good from that right pin. You can just see she was finding all the holes and the gaps on the floor. She's truly their energy giver. And again, absolute dominance in that second set. Sits now with eight kills. And more impressively, so yesterday she hits 540. Today she ups herself through wow. the first two sets. She's showing off on senior weekend. Some of the best in the country can barely hit 400 in a season. And here's McBride, 727. Basically, this comes down to a matchup of middles versus right sides That's right. for the next two sets. And you wonder, Charlotte went in the locker room at that halftime break. What's the adjustment for Charlotte? Because that second set was not their best performance. No, not at all. I think for them, it's going to come to controlling their side of the ball. They have got to be clean, have some clean volleyball. They got to win the serve pass game. So with that first ball, having good control, being able to get their middles back involved and see what they can do offensively. A Charlotte team that Went five and nine last year in CUSA. They want to take a step forward and win that fourth and fifth games this year. It has been so dependent on the middles here. Laura Kreshmer carrying the load for Coach Weatherington, who was a two-time MEAC Coach of the Year at Hampton before getting the Charlotte job a decade ago. I will say you couldn't tell by the body language of these two clubs that the season's over, and I kind of like that with a week to play. I think both teams, the culture is great for both of these programs. You look at Charlotte, Karen Weatherington, she spoke to that, the, the culture, the, the fun. She said they do ice cream socials, they do team bonding all the time. She said what's been most important for them is their foundation, and that's what they've been building, and that's what they're looking forward to. Again, plagued by a lot of adversity this year. So looking to build and carry that on to the spring and see what success they can have. Now we begin set three with Annika Wetterstrom, the setter, on service. Alderetti, after the miss hit, takes a swing and gets the kill. Not her finest, but a fourth <laughs> kill for Alderetti. Whatever it takes. 35 swings for Angela's last night. Today, only four kills, but still a high attack total. Yeah, lots of swings for her. A lot out of system, and I think that's something they're looking to get some better balls to her, and sometimes there's better control for her in the back row with that. Good insistent kill for the middle. Sydney Bayham, her first action at Roswell, Georgia. She's a big puzzles fan, I've been told as well. Loves a puzzle. And you could tell out of that timeout that Coach Weatherington needed to fix some things. Goes to her bench. McBride, who has been dominant in the first two sets, continues nine kills for Fran McBride. Just tremendous patience, great wrist control. Her hang time is just impressive. In system to the newly inserted middle. Bayham finishes it off. 
And Charlotte's net presence, very nice today. And that'll open the door for Kreshmer, who subs back in. It's always good for Charlotte when she's in the front row. Can they build and keep her up there for quite some time? Back in system. Kreshmer is dangerous and hits that in. Ruled by the line judge, so point Charlotte. The Kreshmer's hit middle, back corner, near side, every shot in the arsenal <laughs> for the middle. <laughs> she just needs to adjust wherever the ball is passed to the setter. <laughs> Here's Peyton Evanstad in to serve. Riggs. That sends Evanstad to the floor. Huff hits it back corner, and that causes some trouble. Freed by Wetterstrom. Finister dug out. Whalen with good hands. And that's a double touch on the ECU setter. Everybody questioning that one. I love that laugh from Coach Weatherington. Her daughter, of course, Zoe, is at Penn State. She's got her senior day today, and Karen's a happy camper regardless. Oh, man. Tremendous career for her daughter, transferred to Penn State. Said the Big Ten has done a piece on them and their relationship. And again, she hates missing it today, but so many family members there watching senior day. I guess the nearest Big Ten team to Charlotte would be Iowa? <laughs> maybe, maybe. Maybe Maryland? Maryland. And maybe in a few years it's UNC. Who knows? Oh, my goodness. Conference realignment's weird. It is weird. New setter in Lauren Nixon plays in the front row from Middleton, Indiana. I guess Indiana's somewhat close to North Carolina. Yeah, that's true. So Paul goes off the net. Finister's dug out, mm. and that ball goes out of play into our lead ref's chair, Wade Brents. We have seen a much more scrappy version of Charlotte here in set three. Well, they know what is at stake, and again, they play hard. They know how to compete. So that's what you see from them defensively. What's th their kind of their struggle is their side out, their ability to put it away offensively. That's an ace for Angela Zaldaretti, who's now in the top five in aces in the American. Adding to her resume for an all-conference bid. <laughs> That's right. Was named second team last year as a freshman in the all-freshman team. A little off balance here. And a roof. Pate combines with Finister. What I love, too, Evan, is the youth of East Carolina. We speak to the freshmen, the sophomores. That is what's producing right now. That's the presence that we're seeing in the future of East Carolina Volleyball. Everyone on the court right now will return for ECU next year. The big loss will be Brittany Wood on the front line. And a nice kill. Charlotte going deep into its bag for the bench. That's Sanaya McCoy, only her 27th set all year. A really great off-speed type roll shot, finding a hole. McCoy, 1.12 kills a set. And those are the tertiary options as this serve goes into the net. That Charlotte has had all year six different players average a kill or more percent. Well, we know Kreshmer's going to show up, show out, and I think it's been who who else is going to step up? And that was something that Coach Karen Weatherington spoke to us about earlier was they've really been trying to find their rhythm and really try to get people in different situations. There's Kreshmer. Get right back to it on the slide. Because you're right, this offense revolves around her, even when she's in the back row. It really does. And again, I think for them, it's been finding who is that outside one, who is that outside two. It's been a little bit of a rotation, but different people have stepped up and 
they're contributing in a lot of different ways. Laura Kreschmer, who spent time in the Bundesliga growing up in Germany playing youth volleyball, serves that into the net. A few weeks ago, Coach Weatherington said they were able to surprise her with a brother. Her brother visited North Texas when they played there. She said it was so fun. They huddled up after practice and said, let's take a picture. And her brother popped out and was able to travel with them for a few weeks and visiting from Germany. There's an ace for ECU. Yeah, the Kreshmer story is incredible. Moving to the United States, mm. becoming an all-CUSA player, and will most likely be on the All-American team, depending on how it unfolds next week, leading to our media timeout. ECU and Charlotte in a back-to-back -back battle, one set apiece. Welcome back to Greenville, and how about the Boys and Girls Club of the Coastal Plain? They're having a good old time. Things you love to see on a Saturday. So fun. Kids having a blast at college sports. And everybody got a drink and a snack. <laughs> well, you buried the lead there. That's the most important part. No doubt. As Alderetti hits a treat into the net, points Charlotte. I, that's how I bribed my son to come yesterday. They have candy. <laughs> you do wonder on these back-to-back -back nights, and we've asked both coaches about this, but the scouting, the mental adjustment, and then the first two sets were so drastically different. Who makes the adjustment here in set three? Well, it's tough, too. And you look at East Carolina, they have such depth on the bench, as you see right there, Carlia Northcross putting that one away. It's tough, right? You got Izzy Marinelli last night played right side. Haven't seen her much at all in the second set, so it's, it's difficult for the Charlotte Club to scout East Carolina when they have two different lineups, two different looks. Ellie Pate, who appeared in the South Florida series but hadn't played in a month. That's right. Leading up to that, as both coaches are throwing out the Rolodexes and seeing who they can find. What wow. a save by Beckham. This must go over, and it goes out. Despite the defensive effort, Point Charlotte. has to go back to the 10-foot line. That touch hits the floor. Nice swing by Sanaya McCoy. Her first action of the month here in the front row. A transfer from ECU. Played a little bit during that COVID spring season. And finding a hole knowing how tough ECU's block is. Right over the block is perfect. Alter ready, goes down line and gets the points. That's five kills for Angeles today. A little bit of secondary scoring because McBride's been excellent with a nine, and they have Alter ready with five. Definitely not the Alter ready show as it was last year. Really balanced. And again, had a lot of people involved last night, but it's always good getting Alter ready on the scoreboard. Really tight set, and that is an illegal lift on Annika Wetterstrom, who has plenty of experience, 3,000 career assists. 
And that's what Coach Weatherington's asking. She's been playing off and on this year with a broken toe, Evan. She wears a boot <laughs> and into the to the gym. Again, we 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 sometimes don't see what what injuries some of these players, the nagging ones that they're playing with and playing through, just showing their mental toughness. We talked about boots, and all I can think about now is Adidas versus Nike. <laughs> these two schools with various sponsorships. Ricks is dug out. Here's Alderetti. Charlotte's kept her in check tonight. Big dig by Beckham. And that one stays in. A kill off the tape for Angeles. Cross court swing. It's a big one for Angeles. Pirates trying to separate themselves up six. This would be a second straight win for ECU after the five game losing streak. And a block for McBride. She's had a fantastic match. Three blocks now for Fran. Absolute dominance. And her play is contagious. Truly just spreads amongst her team, giving them a lot of confidence. That one's killed down line. Nice swing by Jessica Ricks. And this is where Charlotte can now score points with Kreshmer back in rotation. And Ricks as well. So dominant. Ricks last night, 12 kills. Last weekend had 30 combined kills. And her two losses versus FAU. That serve stays in. A big ace for Charlotte. First ace of the match. ECU has eight of them. Huge difference. Yeah, I even noted that last night. Didn't have, they're, they're not as strong in the trying to serve tough type category, really going after those strong aces like East Carolina is. Alderetti goes off of hands and ends the point. Facing a Charlotte team that when they win the first set are seven and two. It's a really good team when they start strong. But ECU has flipped the script these last two. They're a totally different team than they were in that first set. Charlotte just came out really strong, got ECU on their heels, and a few hitting errors and poor passing, and Charlotte got the victory in that first set. Good back set. And that sneaks the difference right through the middle. Good kill for Wetterstrom finding Jessica Ricks. Only played in two matches last year. He's really stepped up here in year four. Just over two kills a set. And now a defensive specialist, Eston Clay, out of West Virginia, comes in. Tess Beckham on serve. Then keeps the ball alive. Huff with a wide open space on the court and puts that away. We've seen the depth now of East Carolina. That's eight different players that have scored a point. A really smart touch right there from Huff, who's had a lot of really great matches this year as a freshman. She's been in some big time, big time matches that's given her that game experience. Again, just a freshman. An ace. This is the story now for this team. Nine aces for the Pirates. This is what they do. Serve so tough. Last weekend versus USF on Friday, they had 12 aces. This is a big part of who they are. That top hand serve. Oh, sits right in the middle of the court. Essentially an ace, and the run continues here for ECU. Timeout Charlotte. 49ers are struggling big time on service team today. But sometimes, too, you just need to call a timeout just to break the momentum there. Again, as you can see, a match recap so far, one and one. It's been passing so far that has played Charlotte. And as you see, the offense has gotten going. Is this an ACDC concert or a match <laughs> recap? I'm feeling the vibes today. 
Dreschner been dominant from the middle. The blocks for East Carolina's come alive. Great offense right there from the Pirates. Who are now hitting 193 as opposed to Charlotte hitting right around zero hit percentage. And that's what's fueled these last two sets. It's been the difference in the last two sets. East Carolina really separating themselves offensively with hitting, controlling their side of the ball. Charlotte needing to get a great first ball, needing to side out better. Kreshmer's been the story for Charlotte. Six kills, five blocks, and ECU balanced. Five different players with at least three points. Presented by Grady White Boats, the match summary. Which of these teams are taking a banana boat in the offseason and which team's taking a boat to the NIVC? That, that is a <laughs> magical question. Who's it going to be? Yeah, though Augustine noted they want to play in a postseason. Whether that's the NIVC or, and they're probably out of the NCAA conversation. But if a bid is offered, they would take it. After they eat some turkey, of course. Good kill by Brittany Wood on her senior day, stepping up. First kill for Brittany. Both Brittany and Bree Wood have been outstanding con contributors here at East Carolina. This is Brittany's fifth and final season. And another senior, Sarah Schultes, comes in to serve. Charlotte deep to its bench. That's Nina Parker who's blocked at the net. And it's all Pirates in set three. Holly Huff showing her link. Great tandem block right there with her and Alyssa Finister. There is Bree Wood in the top five in all-time ECU kills in attendance. Her sister Brittany will finish out her career today. Look at the effort of Huff to save it. And then Kreshmer goes for a blast. Shum keeps it in. And a point for Charlotte as both teams are diving on the court. You know, a few times in the last few weeks, Adler wants to, like, save his players, like, when they're running towards the sideline. Last night, Kinsey Beckham almost ran Frank Craig over <laughs> onto the sideline. Adler Augustine watching on with his team, searching for a 2-1 to -one set lead. And would be a sweep over Charlotte in the series. Good tip by Huff for the kill. She has four tonight. And these right side hitters, whether it's Marinelli or McBride or Huff, there's been good options to them. It really has been. That's been the difference from last year to this year, having that right side option and having depth there. Fran McBride, new addition. I see Ollie Huff as well. And then Izzy Marinelli strong when put there too. That's an ace, the story of this match for ECU. 11 aces. And what that does is it takes Charlotte out of system, puts pressure on them, gets their setter off the net, and difficult to put the ball away. Jennings Hall, the junior right side in her fourth year, comes in to play the front row. So everybody checking in for both teams. There's a long bump set. Charlotte playing in system. And Kreshmer misses wide. A rare hitting error gives ECU set point. And Alyssa Finister almost did a little roll over there. To, <laughs> to avoid the ball, right. To avoid getting hit. <laughs> because Kreshmer's done everything right. Oh. Except that swing. Set point here for the Pirates. Roll shot, ECU in system. Hall into the block, and the set continues. Thompson with the roof. This will be the last rotation for Kreshmer on the court, so these are much needed points for Charlotte. Can the 49ers pull off an 11-0 run? Let's see. ECU swings for the set. The slide is kept up. Jennings Hall dug out. Nice save by Evan Stan.
And the set continues. Good swing by Thompson. Charlotte hanging tough. Great offense. They're just battling so much. Was able to push that one through the ECU block. This for the set. And Wood terminates it. So Brittany Wood gives the Pirates a two set to one lead after another impressive second set. A really great victory for the Pirates. 25-14. Let's see if they can finish it on senior day. Welcome back to Greenville. Fun moments in between these two sets. And East Carolina team is starting to roll here. 25-8, 25-14, and today is senior day in Greenville. So the Pirates will honor a handful of seniors. We've seen multiple of them check in today. And this place gets rocking and rolling for the no quarter. Here are some of those seniors for ECU. Brittany Wood, whose sister Bree was one of the best ever to play here at ECU. Askew, the setter, McBride, who will come back for her COVID year. And Soraya Schultes. It's an impactful senior class for Adler Augustine. Well, he's done a really great job just developing the leadership and graduating a lot of impactful players, and, and he's continuing to build. And what a tremendous season. They've had 19 wins, Evan, approaching 20 wins this year. You know, last year they were so close in so many matches. Again, it's so fun for the seniors to go out Hopefully this afternoon, clinching their 20th victory this season. Which will be the most in six years for the program. It would be a big mark. Actually, eight years, 2017. And there's one of those seniors, Juliana Askew, who will come up short of 4,000 career assists. However, today, with today's numbers, has crossed the 1,000 career assists at EC. So impressive. What a great career she has had. She's hoping to stay in Greenville next year and wants to be around the volleyball program and, and still give back as Caitlin Trowles has done the same thing this season as she is in her gap year before med school. And they want to be around the program and that's always a, a good thing, right? When you can't keep them away. It all comes down to this final week of the regular season and then selection Sunday and IVC selection Sunday night which is even later than 6 o'clock. <laughs> I had a coach one time tell me that his players were on the road for Thanksgiving, right, with the families. They got the call for the NIVC at 
he called them all back and said, we have practice Monday morning. Oh, yeah. Get back to campus now. Oh, yeah. It is a quick turnaround. I imagine East Carolina is prepared for that just in case. He is excited for his players to get to have Thanksgiving with their families this year, and he joked, and not have Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> How about the blocking of Fran McBride tonight? Four blocks and nine kills for the senior. She's truly been extraordinary, dominant from the beginning, really clean volleyball from her. This may be McBride's best match since the Virginia Tech game where she had 15 kills, named all-tournament team at the Hokie Classic. McBride saves that right at the net. And Wood goes down line for a nice cut shot kill. Surprising herself a bit on that swing. It's always tough, right, when you get a free ball like that of trying to put it away, but a really great line shot. You want to ask you one of the seniors in to serve. Overpass. Who touched the net? Okay, that's on Charlotte. Wetterstrom into the net. And ever since that first set, the Pirates have seemed to take over this match. They've really had their foot on the pedal the entire time, really demonstrating that they are the better team. And that was something Adler Augustine noted even coming into the weekend. We don't, we can't really look at their record. We have to control our side of the ball and do what we do best and come out and dominate. Charlotte now with a five-player back row to return this serve. ECU's dominated 11 aces. Getting Charlotte out of system all night. McBride into the block. Kreshmer may single-handedly bring Charlotte back tonight. Woo. Her length. She's like a center for a basketball program, how long she is. Great timing. Brittany Wood, no touch at the net. So Charlotte with back-to-back -back points. An ECU team that's gotten back to its season average, hitting 198 today. Fresh off the five-match losing streak, and Adler Augustine said, we got to shake up the eight bottle. Find a way to win some matches. Got the win last night on the verge of a win today. I think so much too when you when you have a losing streak like that, you gotta get back to having fun. You, you've got to get back to the fundamentals of the game. And again, they were able to regain their confidence last night. But wrap up a strong home slate as well. As that serve goes out, the Pirates are eight and four here in this building. They had their best start in conference in the American era, so in the last decade, nine and two, and then hit a rough patch with three five-set losses mixed in. Definitely a tough patch, facing a lot of those West opponents. That's four touches, so a point for Charlotte. And yeah, they just weren't able to grind out some of those five sets, Evan, again. And a lot of those came down to they were up and could not finish out the set. Had match point at South Florida in a five-set loss, which effectively eliminated them from the East Division Championship. There's a touch of the net, and Angela Zaldaretti with her eighth kill. Two away from yet another double-double. So strong offensively and defensively. It's good to see her getting going offensively this afternoon. Ricks hits it to the back row. Beckham's had a nice performance today. Better dig by Whalen. McBride. That's good keep up there from Finister. Charlotte in system. Perfectly touched by the middle, and Bayham with the kill. Bayham with the big heads up. Placement, working those corners, pushing it deep. I love this when a middle hitter can do this. Great placement. Give him a service ace. 
Charlotte's on a roll here in set four. They want to play spoiler and push this to five. A 49er team that went on the road and won a big one at UAB two weeks ago. Good block in the middle, and Bayham's having a nice set. The sophomore to Georgia. The all-time block leader at Centennial High School in Roswell. Good hands there. Back-to-back -back points for her. A kill and a block. Alderetti had to punch that to avoid the net. Upshaw, off hands. And that time, Angela sneaks it in. One kill away from a double-double. That's what makes her so tough. Again, a super off-the-net set from Askew. And Angela is able to turn it down line. Peyton Evanstad continues this two-point swing. The Pirate serving has been the name of this match. Good dig there from the setter. Back corner. Nice dump kill for Annika Wetterstrom, the fifth-year senior, closing out her career this week. So much emotions for a senior when you go into your final week of college volleyball. This is when you just enjoy the moment and and just leave it all on the court. Playing with a broken bone in her foot Ooh, as well. Goodness. Well, that's senioritis. She'll be thankful to heal, though. <laughs> that goes into the net, so four touches on ECU. Adler Augustine imploring his club to pick it up here after a slow start. Charlotte has been strong from the beginning at this set. Good job sneaking it inside the antenna. And Huff into the roof. Good hands by Wetterstrom at the net, combining with Thompson in a timeout for ECU. We'll take this timeout. Charlotte up four. Looking to push this match to five sets. Welcome back to Gre Welcome back to Greenville. Good battle here in this fourth set. Charlotte up by four. ECU has dominated sets two and three, but Charlotte came out strong in the first set. Now Angela's all to ready, gets her double double. Thirteenth of the year for Angela's, and the hot streak continues. She is so deserving. Offensively, getting going has been difficult for her. Again, the offense is spread out, and people are kind of camping out on her. But being creative, she knows how to get it done. Top five in points, the American Athletic. This time a dig by Evanstad with Angela's in the back row. Huff goes left-handed and tools the block for a point. How important is this stretch for ECU out of the timeout? Oh, it's so big. I think for them to get some momentum, to string some points together, 
to, to maintain the confidence that they have and get back in this thing. Really tight to the net. It's been a busy day for Wetterstrom. And a tool of the block, big swing for Thompson. Has 1,000 career assists and over 500 kills. Very productive in her Charlotte career. Yeah, don't sleep on her. She has so much explosiveness, really smart tool right there. That goes into the net. Nevenstad gives the point back with the net violation. And the longer this set goes, the more Charlotte has some confidence to win set four. They really do. They were really tight in some sets last night. Right now it's ECU just not being clean on their side of the net. Finister in system, dug out. Huff tools the block. And Evanstad's been feeding the pin hitters very well. With, with a great pass like that, she can go to her pin hitters. Ollie Huff can jump out of the gym. A really definitive kill from her. That's a blast into Alderetti's chest. A teed up tip. And that's just too easy for Charlotte. Thompson puts it away. Seven kills now for Thompson. I'm telling you, she's done a really good job contributing behind Ricks and behind Crushmer. She has been solid for the 49ers. Overpass. That is put away. Charlotte on a 3-0 run as Crushmer terminates. ECU struggling on serve-receive. Again, too many overpass balls like that and just terminated from Charlotte. Just easy points. North Cross flicks her wrist and it actually works. Higher most conventional kill for the Memphis, Tennessee product. Now Juliana Askew, one of the four seniors, will come in to serve. Sitting on 3,800 assists, 3,900 assists now. Between North Florida and here in Greenville. Kreshner, that tip actually goes out. So Laura Kreshner, nine kills, seven blocks, effective match of the net. McBride, that is kept alive. Good hands by Wetterstrom. Askew is navigating like a mom with four kids in she a van. Is. She is trying to manipulate <laughs> traffic. Telling everybody where to go. Pate, dug out. Riggs, that's kept up. That time Pate puts it away. Point ECU. Angeles Alderete in the back row, just adding a few more digs. And then Ellie Pate putting it away. Is that called stat stuffing? Absolutely. When you have 14 digs and now 10 kills. She's just taking them. She's keeping them alive. Upshaw, who's had trouble hitting in system today. Not the case for Alderetti, who goes down line. 11 kills for the all-conference sophomore. The line is wide open. About go again. Right off of Wetterstrom's hands. Two-point swing for the Pirates, who lost set one, then dominated sets two and three. Ricks takes an attack. Big blast from the middle. And that is some good Charlotte offense right there. Amazing first ball, three options. 
And Riggs putting it away. This is Kreshner's last rotation and a great serve. McBride. Kreshner has to bump set this. <laughs> Doing everything nicely kept up by McBride. Wow. Ricks blasts it long, and ECU wins the defensive battle. Here's Tia Shum in to serve. ECU has lived on that service line, 11 aces, and a hitting error. Makes this a two-point difference. Well, Charlotte challenge this year it will be the last challenge for Coach Weatherington. And there you go. Final challenge for Charlotte, unless it is one. Also a crucial swing point here late in the set. Is there a hand touch there for McBride? Hard to tell. Now this match has been very defensive minded. Charlotte struggling to swing and then ECU's block has picked up in sets two, three, and four. Yeah, it really has, and you can just see right there the difference. Obviously, ECU with the nod offensively, but Charlotte is just hanging in tough. They've done a really good job, even in this set, defensively, and also siding out, which is why, again, right now they're up by two. Their blocks has a little bit of a nod, so you've got to give it to Charlotte. And so close right now trying to steal a set from ECU sweep. That's a little different pose from Adler Augustine than we've seen in the past. <laughs> he is noted being a little less hands-on, leaning on his assistants, like Frank Craig to be more the instrumental coaching here. The longer this takes, the more you wonder, well, was there a touch on McBride? I know those balls are always so hard because sometimes they're hit above the block. Looks like she's zooming in. There are different angles <laughs> than what you see on ESPN that the referees look That's at. Right. So Susan Fleener will evaluate this. Is that a bag of popcorn next to Susan? <laughs> Just in case she needs a snack. I don't want someone with butterfingers reviewing a uh, monitor with calls. <laughs> it just doesn't sound like a good combination. You're going to mess up the iPad? And poor Jessica Ricks. What is she doing? Is I icing saw her, that. icing her trap. <laughs> icing, actually, her entire back. In the middle of a timeout. Just a little sore. <laughs> now she's icing her head. I hope she's okay. Well, she's probably hot. Is there any net touch, any finger touch? Uh, I say no. Maybe the, the index finger there of fingernail? That'd be Finister in the middle. It wouldn't be McBride. Well, you know what? Ricks last night was getting her cast rolled out in the middle of a timeout. <laughs> That's a savvy move by the senior. Oh. Get all the help you can get. There's, there's Jessica. Okay, Susan, what do you got for us? No touch. Ball stands. Not confirmed, but stands. Key difference. Stands. It'd be hard to confirm it with uh, that instant replay. That's right. Which means Charlotte is now out of challenges until the fifth set if it goes five. Yeah, Karen got her explanation. It's a good time for her to regroup her team. I imagine it would be difficult to see a touch on yes. that play. Is probably what was said. So 16 14, tight in the fourth. Upshaw has tipped everything. McBride does not tip, and the block stands firm. Bayham with the roof.
Great job, Charlotte, out of a long break like that, getting a definitive point. Their lead now up three. McBride makes up for it with a back row swing. Double figure kills for Fran McBride. She's 10 today. Her timing has been impeccable today, going around the block. Minimal touches versus her. She has been so solid for the Pirates. This is an important rotation now as Ollie Huff comes into the front. Kreshmer is out for one more rotation. Huff through the double. Big point for ECU back within one. Huff has been a great addition in the last few sets. Again, seven kills for the right side. Just opens it up a lot, Evan. Off the tape, only the seventh service error. You combine that with 11 aces for ECU. That's and a, some pretty good statistics right there. And a costly one at that. Miyu Suramake comes in. Southern Idaho transfer. That'll go deep. And right back with a service error. These are critical points in this fourth set. And every miss serve, you just kind of hold your breath, wondering, could, could that have been what allowed us to be up two, up three? Here's Angela Zaldaretti, top five in aces in the American. Tip, dug out by Pate. Huff into the block. This time, Huff goes deep corner for the point. And the freshman has eight kills. She has truly been the difference maker in the last few sets. You got to give it to her, right? Not starting the match, coming in, being open, being ready. Eight kills for the freshman. Service error all to ready. Man. Both teams giving up points. Woo, those hurt a little bit. Especially late in a set like this. It was 21-21 in that first set. Charlotte closed it out on a 4-1 run. We'll see here who closes out set four. Angeles last night had two service aces, two errors. This might be an ace, and there you go. Charlotte extends the lead to two. And ECU will use a timeout. Actually, they will not, but Coach Augustine gets up and encourages his unit. They have a timeout to work with. In system. Huff is roofed. That hit Ollie Huff, so a big point for Charlotte. And now the timeout. What a response here for Charlotte in the last three points. They have been so solid the last few, being steady. And again, their defense on display. This is a big week and a big weekend, in fact. Championships all get rolling this weekend. Oh, this weekend. is so fun. These auto bid leagues where the conference tournaments are a factor are fantastic. And the one I'm looking out for is in the Atlantic Sun. Florida Gulf Coast is a top 30 team in the country. Lipscomb could give them a run and then you look across the American East, the Northeast, the A-Sun, these are all on ESPN+. Plus. This is when these tournament championships, this is when it gets fun. So much is on the line, and it's anyone's opportunity to win out. These That's are a lot of one-bid leagues, yes, too, which yes. makes these games uber important. All leading up to Selection Sunday, a week from tomorrow. The good news is, in the American, it's all locked in. SMU has earned the auto bid. But who can be an at-large? Will Wichita State, will Rice get those last couple of bids on Selection Sunday? RPI is always a factor in that. And right now, Wichita State at 55, so they're right on the bubble. Probably the only team that'll get an at-large opportunity outside of SMU. Look at those girls having fun. Home on TV. Charlotte up three, now an overpass. 
And point 49ers. An illegal back row attack on ECU. Critical point. Here's Whalen. Good serve. Hate off hands. Good block at the net. Huffin finished her combined four. East Carolina needing a stop there. Again, Charlotte within three, closing this out. Finister in to serve, the true freshman. Wetterstrom hits the slide, and a net violation gives Charlotte the point. Here's Charlotte in prime position to push this match to five sets. A block! Set point, Kreshmer, who's done everything for Charlotte. Charlotte's block has been the difference maker this set, keeping them ahead and fighting the entire time. Hoff clears it over. Charlotte swings for set four. Nice dig by Evanstad. Hoff. Unable to hit it in the courts, and we're going five here in Greenville. Charlotte was left for dead in sets two and three, and what a response, 25-19. Well, they are deserving. They have fought the entire time. Come back, fifth set, Charlotte and East Carolina. Welcome back to Greenville. We're heading to five sets. And who would have thought, given yesterday's match, ECU dominated. Charlotte, to their credit, in set four, yeah. took over with the block at the net. 13 team blocks to push this five. They really did. They slowed down East Carolina so much. And you also got to give it to their serve. They were taking East Carolina out of system and out of rotation. And look through four sets. Obviously, East Carolina with the nod offensively. 
and hitting percentage. But look at their block, Evan. That has been the difference with Kreshmer in the front row and, and so much involvement with Charlotte slowing East Carolina down. It all comes down to this race to 15, win by two. Which makes you wonder who's going to pull this one out because ECU's look dominant in two sets and Charlotte has grinded out sets one and four. They really have. They've never really gone away, if you will. And even last night, they competed at such a high level. So close in those three sets last night. So here we are, fifth set. Who's going to get to 15 first? Here we go. ECU for a chance at 20 wins. Charlotte to play spoiler. And now we're good to start set five. <laughs> Rotate at eight points and get this puppy rolling. Charlotte has not won over ECU since 2005. That's what's on the line here in set five. McBride opens up with a roof. Kreshner is all over it. Absolute annihilation. Nine blocks <laughs> for the middle. Actually, 10. That's a double-double. 10 and 10. And, and what that does, the, the confidence, it, it just spreads. Eight hits it through the double. ECU playing out a system here. McBride over Kreshmer. That's a tight angle, and McBride tipped it. Thompson on the seam shot. Here's Pate. Nice dig by Whalen. And that's too many touches, point ECU. Tell you what, Whalen back row is just tremendous from the libero. She's ranked top five all time in history with career digs. What a tremendous defender back row for Charlotte. Neither of these teams have excelled in five sets. Charlotte three and four. ECU three and six, with both losing last week in five set matches. Beckham comes in to bump this. And Alteretti hits it wide, so Charlotte with the two to one lead. In, in both of these programs, knowing how hard it is in the fifth set, this is what they practice about, this is what they practice for. And as each coach knows, every single point is so critical. Alteretti through the block. And this has the feel of a 15-13 type of fifth set. Woo. And as a head coach, that's where it just hurts. <laughs> you want somebody to be able to put it away. As you can see, Angeles pushing through. So it makes volleyball so difficult. Charlotte was outmatched in sets two and three and came right back to steal the fourth. Ricks is dug out. McBride kind of waited and waited and found the seam in the block for the point. McBride now 11 kills. Hitting over 300 on senior day. Upshaw sneaks it in to the back corner. Big point for Charlotte. The Charlotte team has overcome a tough stretch, losing 12 of 13, but you couldn't tell today. No, I, I think this team knows how to compete. I think they've been really, really tight in a lot of matches, especially last weekend with Florida Atlantic. So they know what it takes. She's putting the right points together at the right time. Whoa, Alteretti shoves her own teammate. And a violation on ECU going over the, the tape. She couldn't get up. <laughs> now, ECU arguing that didn't affect the play, but she was well over the line. Let's watch this. Yeah, it does interfere with Ricks there on the landing. Unfortunate. Good call. Crew led by Wade. Brents, who told us pre-match he's worked 10 of his last 11 matches have gone five sets. So he knew it was coming. <laughs> and already he's tied it up at four. So he's telling us that he's had the endurance. He said in the pre-match, he said, hey, I've had a lot of five-setters recently. 
And we're like, well, how many? We called it. I said, oh, that is a lot. Upshaw off hands here in this race to 15, win by two. Back of the bump. Alderetti hits it long, and that's four hitting errors for the Pirates in this fifth set. This is what they did not want coming into a fifth set. Still within one right now, but this is what is happening in a fifth set. Again, they have to control their side of the ball first. Izzy Marinelli comes in and is roofed. What a senior day for Wetterstrom. And a timeout, ECU. Charlotte up two. The 49ers looking to play spoiler here in Greenville. It's a race to 15, and right now Charlotte up 6-4. This will be the biggest win of Charlotte's American athletic season. It really is. East Carolina right now not playing solid at all. Back-to-back -back hitting errors has plagued them. A near roof at the net. Charlotte has dominated at the net defensively. 15 blocks. Beckham has to bump this to Marinelli. Gets it deep to the back row. Upshaw, off hands. East Carolina a little disjointed in this rally, and that goes out. A hitting error for Angeles Alteretti. And here's ECU on the verge of losing this match. Teams will rotate at eight points. The block is in. 15 blocks for Charlotte. And that time, it's the senior Wetterstrom. You can see the energy of Charlotte right now. Just absolute contagious and dominant. Look at this, clearly in. Kenzie Beckham trying to look it through. It's been all Charlotte at the wow. net with these blocks in set five. Whew. A Charlotte team that has played five five-setters in the conference. Have only won one of them. And this would be a big one. Timeout, East Carolina. Because right now in the American Athletic Conference, it's a busy day in this league. And I was curious how the Rice-Wichita State match would go. That's got five written all over it. No doubt. But how about SMU? A 15-1 season, and they can put a bow on it against North Texas. Well, it's just so great. They're so deserving. A phenomenal season that they have had. Again, I'm excited to see how far they will go in the NCAA tournament. We will find out next weekend. Can't believe it's already here. Memphis and Temple fighting for bragging rights in the East Division. And Wichita State, the winner of that game, could be back in the at-large conversation. If you lose this one, you're probably out of the tournament right. state. And right now for these two programs, Charlotte and East Carolina, they're playing for some pride here in the final home match for ECU. Honoring four seniors here in Greenville. This is a unique moment. 
because Charlotte's playing a fantastic fifth set. They really are. East Carolina plagued by four or five hitting errors so far, struggling to get points offensively. Charlotte has just really defended their net so well. Slowed East Carolina down completely. A 3-0 run all via the block, with Charlotte up four. That ball goes into the net. Nice save. Back in system, Alderetti. Off the block and in. 17 team blocks for the 49ers. Unbelievable. Evan, their block is just so dominant right now. East Carolina cannot buy a point. That's five straight blocks for Charlotte. Make it six. Bayham with the roof, and everything's being rejected. This is incredible. Unreal. Last weekend, Charlotte obviously had FAU at home. They lost on their senior day. Good tip of the net. Huff ends the 5-0 run. Wow. Charlotte trying to come in, still one on their senior day. This is the most blocks for Charlotte in the match since that five-set loss to FAU. 21 blocks. Putting up some epic numbers today. And now the pressure back on the Pirates. Good serve. Better save by the senior. Wetterstrom kept it up. There's Wetterstrom teeing up. Upshaw, down line for the kill. And Charlotte's four points for the match. There is a vibe and an excitement here on the Charlotte Unreal. bench. Unreal. It is electric. Charlotte lost set two, 25-8, their largest loss of the season. Now come all the way back to grind this out in set five. Pate with the back row kill. So five kills for Ellie Pate. East Carolina needing kills, needing to get the ball down to get some momentum, because right now Charlotte has it all. That is in. So point Charlotte. A really great swing, a deep ball. Thompson's been busy as well. Yes. She's in double figures now with 10. East Carolina desperately needs a point. Feeding Pate. Letterstrom goes back set. Ricks takes blast. And Charlotte's two points for the match. What a swing. Nice hands, by the way. Thank you. You're so welcome. Protecting you, that's my job. Ricks with a big back row attack. That's why she was icing, you know what I'm saying? Just so she's ready for that back row attack. Charlotte is dominating this fifth set. Race to 15. And it's match point Charlotte. Wow. A stunned East Carolina here on senior day. Match point, Charlotte. Waylon with a nice serve. Pate is tipped. One more. Another save. Huff through the block, and the match continues. In this rotation, McBride comes back into the front. This will be huge if ECU can come back. Maybe too little, too late in the fifth. Match point, Charlotte. It's down to Juliana Askew, the senior. Back set, tipped over to extend it. It's a double touch, and Charlotte comes back in the fourth, dominates the fifth. One of the biggest road wins of the year for the Charlotte 49ers. Unbelievable, 18 blocks for Charlotte. Tremendous effort, Evan. 
from the second set of absolute dominance of East Carolina, 25 to eight, how they were able to recover Evan. It was unbelievable. Charlotte moves to four and 14 in the league, but don't be fooled. This was one of their best performances of the year. You can just see Coach Weatherington there with tears, obviously unable to be with her daughter today for senior day, but you know what else? For her seniors, getting them this victory today is just huge for them and their program. Thank you for joining us all season long. This is the final home broadcast to the regular season. Charlotte and ECU in a fun battle today. Five sets, and it's the Charlotte 49ers coming back to win it. The net presence impressive. For Brittany Hoyt and our entire crew, Riley Callahan, producing today, I'm Evan Budrovich. Thank you for joining us in Greenville all season long. Charlotte takes down East Carolina in a five-set thriller. This is a presentation of ESPN. Have a good night from Greenville.